were you able to see like difference in the participants at the end of the programs or like yeah. down the road even if you yes. see them again that again kind of when it uh, with some participants we'll see them later on down the road a couple of weeks months even mm-hmm. and they'll come up to me and they'll say oh my god thank you for that program you know it really helped me and they tell me about like where they're at right now and mm-hmm. what they've been up to and yeah so there's stuff like that that's not really recorded anywhere because it just kind of they just stop in or they they see you somewhere and say well thank you for that you know it really helped me you know see things and really helped me change my life around and yeah there was a few times that I had people do that to me right yeah yeah, yeah. What's, what sort of, uh, kind of going back to that initial acknowledgement that you were given a program and you needed to kind of revamp it to mm-hmm. be more culturally appropriate. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you were doing things like that, were you, did you experience challenges when you, were, you, when you were trying to do this? I don't know. Not really, not too much challenges because uh, it was... It wasn't very hard to, you know, um, incorporate simple things such as uh, doing the smudging before program and, you know, talking about um, what they're thankful for and, you know, incorporating those seven grandfather teachings into the program because there's so much out there that you can utilize when it comes to that. And uh, when it came to certain topics, you know, it's just from even from my own experience, from my own um, things I've learned and gathered and, and know, like I was able to incorporate it easily. Mm. Like especially when it came down to, for instance, th- there was one topic on alcohol. So we had to teach these teens about you know, drinking alcohol, you know, the, the risks and, and behaviors and what could happen and all this. And sure, we had to stick to some of that um, content that we, that we had been provided in the binder. But then I, I would also bring in a guest speaker who can speak about the traditional aspects about, you know, that how that alcohol affects our spirit and how alcohol was never part of our culture before. Right. Yeah, and how our spirit becomes something else when when that's that when you consume that that alcohol. So it was stuff like that okay. to incorporate, you know, to make it um, more. Yeah, like have that cultural content for them to really grab onto. I think yeah, it just I guess the more stuff that you you learn and gather, you know, throughout your work experience and your travels and you pick up a lot of stuff, right? And then you can really incorporate that into programming. Sure. Yeah. 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 Um, in other conversations that you, you and I have had before, we talked about kind of like jumping through hoops mm-hmm. or hurdles to get things done. Yeah. Were these kind of experiences that you've had at the health center, at the Native Friendship Center, were there things like that to, to overcome, or were they, was um, it a pretty kind of easy to work with environment, I guess? It, yeah, yeah, it was a pretty easy environment, because um, already being, I guess you could like saying an Aboriginal or Native organization, to do stuff such as smudging and, and things like that was easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we didn't have to uh, go through any protocols or anything like that to get... Yeah, yeah. The only challenges that we would find when it came to certain programming is when we wanted to do land-based stuff, if we didn't have the land to do it. Like if we wanted to incorporate, like, sweats. We didn't have our own lodge to do them and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, as a challenge, then, like, how how did you kind of navigate that it's, challenge? I guess we just had to look for um, resource people in the community that were able to conduct those uh-huh. or had their own lodges, and you know, it's just getting um, getting in touch with them and sitting with them and seeing if 
they can be of assistance to the program. As part of your evaluation, then, like, is it pretty easy to, to recognize that you've met objectives that you intended to meet at the start of the year or that you met goals? Yeah, because usually when we, at the beginning of the year, when we do work plans and stuff like that, right, we have to evaluate on, we have to look at our our objectives and were they met and why weren't they met and kind of make a little, uh, write down an explanation of why a certain thing wasn't done or what, maybe why it didn't work out so great. And I, I was just thinking about um, where else, like another place where I worked, it was an alternative school. Uh-huh. And um, there I had, I, as a support, not only to the students, but to the teachers, I incorporated some programming into the school. And because it was a school for mental health and addictions students, I had to really think about, okay, what's going to help these students who are having mental health issues and addictions and um, reading up on stuff and listening to, to um, you know, certain things in the news about mental health and how we can help students with mental health. So what I did was incorporate a lot of, like, start physical activities. Try and do something once a day with the students. Mm -hmm. So what we did was actually, we started off with a, a walking program. And then it eventually got to doing, going out to the gym every day at noon. Mm -hmm. We also had counselors that, that had started in the health center that as part of being in this alternative school and to help your, like themselves with mental health, they had to see a counselor while participating in this. Being a part of this school, you have to take care of your holistic health, yeah. Yeah. so taking care of your emotional and mental. So they had to see a counselor on a regular basis who was located in the same building. And then we also had an elder who was available too for them if they wanted to see and sit with an elder. Mm -hmm. And then of course incorporating culture into the school with providing language classes weekly, having an elder come in to teach language. And then there was also a sharing circle weekly, which it was kind of a tough start okay. because a lot of young people don't like to share in sharing circles. So <laughs> So it was kind of just our, like the staff that would kind of talk. Yeah, but eventually the students started to share a little bit more because we kept it constant. Like every week at this time and this day, it yeah. was a circle. So that kept going and, and they eventually got comfortable and started sharing and smudging. And so that was, I helped with that, that alternative school, get some programming going. And was that during your time at, at the, the health, health center? center? Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, were any of these any easier or harder to kind of measure the success on? Or again, we're just looking at um, attendance-wise, like um, the participants and how much they would share or how much they would uh, show up for certain things. Like it, it was tough when. Um, like some of the students had counseling appointments, for instance, and oh, sure. they didn't want to go to the, the appointment, so they just wouldn't come to school. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or they'd say they have to go because you know they had to be home early or something. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But it, but the only, we just measured through attendance for programs like that. Certain programs um, there was more in depth and longer evaluations that had to be done. Great. And this was with that program, the Choices Program, right. because they wanted documentation on how much success there was from beginning to end because it was a 10-week program. Great. So evaluations had to come from the participants themselves, so like the youth and the parents. Okay. And as well, the volunteers had to evaluate how the program went for 10 weeks. Right. So there was so much paperwork and evaluations that had to be done. And I know, again, from experience, some of the youth don't like to fill those because there was also another form that had to be filled out every week that they finished program. 
And it was, it was getting too much. It was, right. <laughs> yeah, it was like, this is too much evaluation. <laughs> 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 but uh, we tried to get it filled out as much as we could. Like even for the parents who had the, because the pages, they're, it was a 10-week program. So they had to eval- try and evaluate their child for that one night, that certain topic, if anything changed in their child. Right. Yeah, and sometimes they would just write one word answer. So it, yeah. it wasn't even <laughs> worth all the photocopying. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So some were good, but some weren't. Right. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Do you think, uh, I know you haven't been there in a couple of whiles. Like, do you think they're still doing that program? It had stopped for... Um, a year almost, and okay. they're just starting it back up again. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I don't know if they actually started the program, but I know they were trying to uh, recruit more youth to partake in that. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a good program because um, I had people from the island wanting to come to this program in oh, Sudbury, okay. and they said they would drive their kids every day. Right. Yeah, well, not every day, every week to the program. What is Indigenous education? For me, like, I'm thinking, so you have the Western education where you're going to an indigenous program in a post-secondary institute, learning from professors, indigenous professors, through textbook. And then you have um, another side of indigenous education, but I I don't know if you really want to call it in, in... Education where you're learning from elders and traditional knowledge keepers. And it's not education where you sit in a classroom all day. You know, you're, you're with them on the land or in ceremony or in lodges. And so there's that kind of mm-hmm. indigenous education. You talked about uh, wanting to make sure that the culture, the programs you had included culture. Mm -hmm. And you had talked about this idea of uh, seeking balance. Like, is that same idea of seeking balance part of Indigenous education also? Well, because when we're, I guess, in our our teachings and in our culture, we're always striving for balance, right? Holistic, you know, your emotional, spiritual, physical, and what am I missing? Emotional, physical, spiritual, oh, and mental. Yeah, so we always want that balance, right? So when, uh, when, when we, we're not getting enough of one of them, we're off balance. Like, if you're not feeding that physical aspect, there's your there's something physically going to be wrong your, your health wise there's mm-hmm. something going to be wrong or even with your spiritual if you're not feeding that spiritual aspect whether it's cultural ways or you know if people believe in more catholic ways or whatever their spirituality is if you don't have that there's an imbalance there mm-hmm. and um so when i do programming i try to make sure that we have all of that incorporated into the program so people can um, feed their spirit and having all, all of that incorporated. Uh, you also talked about languages in programs. From your perspective, how, like how, how does language fit into Indigenous education? We're always told that our language is so important, right? We, have, we should know or try to speak our language mm-hmm. because there's not like there's only I guess a certain population that can speak it and if we're not going to learn it now it's eventually gonna you know kind of disappear so a lot of people now are really learning their language and 